last week, I had an opportunity to visit two of my former law students who live in the great state of Mississippi. They're both judges. And for what I heard from them and others, boy, it's wonderful where you live. We have low taxes here. We've got businesses, we've got gambling casinos all the way from Cleveland to Memphis. But our kids don't have the quality schools. Our transportation system is in shambles. And so there are some trade-offs, there are some things that happen. And there are some places around this country where taxes have been reduced substantially. I just think that there's a balance somewhere. We should reduce it, we should make it much more inviting for businesses, and that's what I'm committed to. But when you end up, when what you see what this county has done in terms of what's happening in White Flint, what's happening in White Oak, what's happening in the Shaded Grove, and what's happening in the uh, quarter city uh, of the uh, new Seneca uh, Science Quarter, those are massive development projects. I have served for the last year as the president of the County Executives of America, and I've talked to county executives all over this country who are laying off police, who got 35 kids in the school system, 35 kids in the classroom, and a, a challenge. And so a lot of what you've described is not necessarily unique to Montgomery County. We have just come through a major recession. Keep in mind our great neighbors across the river in, in Fairfax. They increased the property tax ad last year on average $350 per household. Average property, I'm sorry, about $400,000. Montgomery County went down $17. And that's a state that's attracting jobs. And so I agree with part of what you're saying, but I think that the, the solution and the problem is a little bit more mixed and nuanced than, than, than your bold description. Yeah.